Hello, oh. I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today, today I will be showing you how to create this awesome freeze frame effect in Adobe After Effects. Kaboom! So, let's fire up Adobe After Effects and get started. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and if you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy the project files, it also includes a tutorial on how to quickly arrange everything, but then you don't have to go to the struggle of uh, following this entire tutorial. So that link will be in the description below and then for those that do want to follow along with this tutorial, I also um, put a link to the footage that I will be using so you can follow along with the same kind of footage. So I have my footage file right here and what I will do is just drag this into a new composition. This composition is named footage and then I will create a new composition by clicking right here and renaming this main comp. Make it around 10 seconds long, doesn't really matter that much how long it is, you can always adjust that at the end. I will click OK and then I will drag my footage right here. So I'm here explaining and then I'll do my act right here and right here I want to freeze a frame, show my name and have some kind of a, a cool look to it in the background. So what I'll do is right here um, I will actually duplicate my footage by going to edit duplicating while the layer is selected. I will also uncheck my audio right here so we only have one layer with audio and I will trim this right to this uh, trim head right here. So um, I'm doing this with shift that snaps it right there. Okay, so once you have done that, I will go right here and pick my pen tool and actually key out myself. So with our pen tool, we're going to draw around our actor. It can be very rough, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so there we go, I have myself keyed out. And what I will do with this video file is actually right click go to time and freeze this frame. So what I will do is now I have my photo right here and it's frozen. Okay, so as you can see the video in the background is still playing. So what I will do is click on this video again on this layer and then go to edit duplicate and right here I will do rename the first one to freeze frame. So just that you know that this is a frozen frame and this is going to be our background layer. Okay, on the background layer I'm going to click on, well I'm going to press M on the keyboard, click on my mask and just delete it. So now our background is all also frozen like so. So now we have this right here. Okay, what I want to do with my background layer is actually I'm going to apply some effects so we have that kind of chromatic aberration. Uh, so I'll go right here and go for set channels. I'm going to uh, add that to my layer right here. I'm also going to apply a Gaussian Blur, so Gaussian Blur and apply that to your layer. I'm going to change my Gaussian Blur directions or dimensions to horizontal. I'm going to increase it uh, like so. Okay. I'm going to put my Gaussian Blur on top and then for the set layers you're going to see that we have a red, green and blue. We want to change our blue to off and our green to off and now we'll have a completely red channel. We'll click right here and go to layer or actually edit duplicate and I will turn off my red channel right here and I'm going to turn on the green channel. So for the green source I'm going to add green Then I'm going to click on that layer and duplicate it once more, turn off the green and for the blue source I'm going to add blue. So now we have all of these colors. What we want to do with the blending mode right here is toggle the switches like so and go for a lighten. Okay, so now we have our well, our exact same background as you can see. Uh, we have the, the same colors and that's because all these colors combined make your actual colors. So that's good for now. What I want to do now is create another new composition. I'm going to rename this to Fractal Noise and click OK. 10 seconds is good. I'm going to apply a new layer, so new layer solid and I'm going to make comp size, click OK and then go to effects, noise and grain and apply the fractal noise effect to it. For the fractal type we can keep it basic, the noise type we're going to change that to block and we're going to change our complexity to 1. Or actually you can play around with it, maybe 3 or 2, uh, depends. Maybe we'll keep it at 2 for now. I'm going to open up my transform settings right here, I'm going to uncheck the uniform scaling. I'm going to increase this all the way like so. and make something like this. You can also add some contrast if you want like more blacks and whites. 
uh, depends a little bit on your preferences, uh, but just try to make it as wide as possible. You can also play with the offset turbulence so it actually moves it to the right like so. And we just want like one frame filled in with just these kind of bars that you see right here. So go back to that main composition. I'm going to the project manager. I'm going to take my fractal noise and I'm going to apply this to my composition right here. So I'm going to put it right here or actually we can put it on the bottom here and just uncheck it. Uh, we just need that information but we don't actually need our layer. I'm going to click on this layer and I'm actually going to rename these so red channel. green channel and blue channel. And there we go. And what we want to do with the red channel is apply effect, distort and displacement map. And for the displacement map layer we want the information of our fractal noise and this is going to displace our red channel. So if we do this you're going to see that our reds get distorted right here and now we're getting this kind of chromatic aberration. You can play around with the settings completely up to you and what you want to do then is just click on that displacement map, go to edit copy and we're going to the green channel and just edit paste it or control V. So I'm going to do the same thing for the blue channel and again you can see that nothing happens to your background because all the colors are in the exact same place. So what you want to do now is just offset this a little bit to your preference. So maybe you want something like this or maybe something like this and that way you can get some really cool chromatic aberrations in the background. You can also put your, yeah, your Gaussian blur maybe on the bottom. Maybe that looks a little bit better. So let's try that out. So then it's also going to displace like so. And what you can do is maybe add another adjustment layer and we're going to rename this to blur and maybe also the brightness. We're going to add a, a another blur right here. It's another Gaussian blur. So blur and sharpen Gaussian blur. And we can increase this and that's going to soften our edges a little bit. Maybe something like uh, seven should be fine. And then we'll also apply a color correction curves and just darken it a little bit and just put it below our freeze frame. So now the background is isolated a little bit more from our original file right here. So our, uh, our original uh, shot right here. So now we have this, it freezes and boom, we have this kind of shot. So as you can see, it actually starts right here. Uh, we can actually make this longer if you want to. So we'll uh, make it as long as we need to. So now we have, it freezes and it stays like that. Another thing that we want to do is actually go back to this displacement map and make sure that you have rep pixels around. That way uh, we're going to get it uh, filled in right here on the top as well. So you can play around with everything right here. Um, also, you can see that we, um, we have black right here. So what we want to do is click on the red channel, just duplicate it one more time. So add a duplicate or control D and this is going to be our original. We're going to delete our channels and just put it below our red channel like so. So that should be fine. Also set it to normal and delete the displacement map of course. So now we have an original file like so. Repeat the edge pixels for the blur as well. I forgot to do that as well. So make sure you do that. Same for the brightness, repeat the edge pixels. And for the blur and brightness right here, I'm also going to offset this right here so it doesn't affect our original video file. So now we only need our footage at the beginning and then right here all the files um, turn in right here. So we also want to apply our text. So we're going to pick our text tool, click over here and I'm going to enter my name and put it on top like so. You can also put it behind the actor if you want to, like overlapping, you can do some cool stuff that way. I'm going to change it to a black so we have a nice thick font. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. It's also cool to have something underneath it like uh, subscribe, <laughs> uh, which is what you should do, but um, yeah. I'm going to put it like right here, a little bit smaller, and that's going to add a little bit more detail and just adding, yeah, these small text it just adds up in the complete overall effect. So I'm going to pick my selection tool, put my text right over here. And as you can see, our text is really hard to read. So what I'll do is go to layer and apply a layer style drop shadow. And I'm going to open up the drop shadow right here and change the distance to 10 and the size to zero. Okay, so now we have a nice drop shadow like so. Our text should come in right when our freeze frame comes. And boom, we have our freeze frame. 
Then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and on that new adjustment layer, I'm going to apply an effect called transform. This is going to be uh, like a little bit of an animation that we want to put in. So to keep it interesting, to keep it dynamic. So at the beginning right here, I'm going to click, uh, well, just uh, hold shift and snap it right here. You have your transform right here and we can actually affect our scale and our rotation. Then go all the way till the end and we can maybe affect the scale a little bit like so and rotate it maybe one. And there we go. So now we should have something like this. And this is already making it a little bit more interesting. So another thing that makes it really cool is to add a music track just on the point that you have this frame, so like a drop from music. And that's going to add, a, and this is going to add up in the effect as well, because currently it doesn't look that spectacular because the audio stays the same, but that's not for this tutorial, just telling you to add your drop just at that point, and that's going to work well. Another thing that I want to do is uh, kind of give that a transition because currently just boom and it's it's yeah just our freeze frame and that's okay you can do that i want to make it a little bit more interesting so i'm going to click on my fractal noise go to edit and duplicate my fractal noise open up the fractal noise and here what we want to do is go to the effects controls and just alt click on the evolution and write time times 500. this is an expression to animate your fractal noise like so Go back to your main comp and create a new adjustment layer. And this is going to be our transition. I'm going to apply an effect called distort and displacement map right here. And I'm also going to go back to my project manager and apply my fractal noise next to the other fractal noise. Also turn it off and go back to that transition. And we want to uh, select our displacement map layer to that fractal noise too. So here I'm going to increase it by a lot like so, and maybe I'm just going to zero out the vertical uh, and I'm going to keep it like so. You can also go back and maybe uh, play a little bit more with the uh, transform right here. So maybe you want to open that up and make them a little bit longer. Maybe you want a little bit more contrast. Completely up to you again. Uh, play around with this, but I kind of like this. Uh, so what I want to do is actually go to the beginning and right here I'm going to trim this like right over here and the next few frames right here i'm going to uh, trim it down so now we have like four frames of this animation one two three four okay on the first frame i'm going to uh, go to edit split layer and then on this first part what i want to do is take my mask tool and just like uh, mask out like the bottom so we only have a displacement on the bottom of our ladle like it's still coming in the frame and then we have the complete distortion and then we have our text. Okay, so maybe right here we can do the same thing, but on the top, so go to edit, split layer, and just this part. And if we're going to see this back, we already have like a more punch in on our effect. So that's a lot cooler. Another thing that I did to make it even more interesting is I added another adjustment layer. And I know a lot of adjustment layers here. Wiggle, wiggle preset V2. Uh, you can buy it, well, you can get the wiggle preset for free. The V2 is still not out yet, so I'm still working on that. Once it's out, I will definitely um, yeah, put a link to it in the description below. So I have my frequency. And I'm going to set this to 10, maybe the amplitude, or actually 20, um, the frequency right here also to 20, and the amplitude is 2, that's fine. Let's go to the beginning right here, so that's right over here. I'm actually using page up and page down to move one frame at a time. And I'm going to click here at that point when it's coming in, and I'm going to just drag over all my stopwatches like so. And then right here, two frames back, I'm going to zero out everything. Two frames forward everything is working and then I'm going to hold shift and pre press page down that's going to move ahead 10 frames I'm going to zero out everything again so now we have so now we'll have like a short uh, kind of screen shake that's going to look a lot cooler and if you think that's a little bit too long you can just click on your adjustment layer press U on the keyboard and drag in your keyframes like so all right, so that's really cool. You can also maybe uh, play a little bit right here and play with your rotation frequency, maybe set it to one and the amplitude also to one. And that's going to keep the image in motion like so. And this is a little bit too much. We can set the amplitude or the frequency to 0.2 or 
something like that. Now we're going to have like a smooth animation as you can see right here. So this is also really cool. Um, this is basically it. So this is how to create a cool freeze frame effect in Adobe After Effects. I advise you to keep your drop just at that point and it's going to look awesome. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more and then I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.